Like I said, moisture is our biggest issue here. Yeah, that makes a little bit of a difference, don't it? No major issues on any of that, hopefully. We're valved off, still 10 PSI. I wonder if now you come over to this one. That's 40. I can't win. This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools. Quality tools, essential support. All right, so we got us a grocery store here that we're gonna go take a look at, and they got uh, low airflow in their produce area. So let's go take a look, see if it's an air restriction, fan, ice, hail and brimstone, and whatever else could be going on. Okay. I feel airflow just fine here. A little colder here than what it was back there. He says 33. What's this one back here say? It says 37. Okay, now we're getting down here to the wet. Which I think they said something about it being the wet. And I bet you anything, we might have mold or something going on in there. Which wouldn't really surprise me much. All right, so we're gonna tear into this because you can see it's blackened. And because it's higher moisture content, that means you're gonna be more likely for mold. Let's see if we can peel this out of here and take a look up behind it, see if we're restricted there or if it's a problem with airflow as far as a fan or something. Okay, this is the back side of it. As you can see, we're a little restricted there with that. Quite a bit. I mean, it's not horrid, but you know, this ain't the strongest fans in the world. Get these cleaned out, and then we'll check the fans down below. Either way, it's some nasty stuff. We're gonna go ahead and get it cleaned out. These last ones here, you can tell they've been shut down for quite a while. The spray nozzles are gone out of them and it's not really that dirty. Uh, it actually looks pretty white. So we've got quite a good chunk out of there. Go ahead and put the screws back up here so this isn't dangling down. But like I said, moisture is our biggest issue here. Yeah, that makes a little bit of a difference, don't it? Yeah, it should let a little more air flow through. I also noticed that we have a uh, temperature sensor in one of the cases that is dry rotted. And here's the other one. So we'll go ahead and get started on that one. All right, so we got it all back together and there's still a little bit of a dead spot right in here. So we're gonna have to have them yank this out here so we can get down underneath there. I have a feeling we got a fan out in that area and there's no good way to get to it. And the way they cram all these shelvings on top of other shelving, it just doesn't come out very easy. So we got this shelving all pulled out and look at what we found here. We got some ice build up on this coil. Now you don't see a lot of ice right here, which it's hard to see much because we still got to dig half this case out. But there's a good chance we've got us a restriction here in our screen on front of the TXV. So I'm gonna check on down the coil, but uh, if the other ones aren't like that, and this one is, it's more than likely something to do with the screen first. If it ain't the screen, then we'll go on to the next step from there. I'm gonna pump this down. You can see frost big time right there, which you know ain't too uncommon, but that, yeah, I don't know. It's looking like we might have a screen that's gunked up. All right, you ready for state of the art? Oh yeah. Well, let's find out where that produce case is at. Right there, multi-deck produce, C14, and the end is C13, so we need C14. Rack C, all right, circuits. Let's go over here to 14. Boy, we got two or three things on here. So that's run 37, it's set for 37. Only one of them's at 41, I bet that's at one. Let's go look at alarms. No alarms at all, so nothing triggered when uh, I cut that wire, which is kind of interesting. But three of them are reading right there at, you know, 40, 32, and 36. Let's go to the warmest one. It's slowly been going up here for the last few days. You can see it kind of going up a little bit. Not crazy amounts, but just a little bit. Go to this next one, pretty flat. See how that one's steady? Go to the next one pretty flat. You can see how that one's kind of stat, uh, flat right through there. We're going to see if we can shut this thing down and pump it down. Let's see what our rack level is too while we're at it. Go over here to sensors. Liquid level 0.93. That looks like it's probably not even being used. Oil levels are all up.
you can see it flowing through there like a river which is for whatever reason normal on all of them that i've seen here it's never 100 percent full never ever you can see that comes up dumps into there and that's your liquid uh, uh, liquid manifold that then sends on out to the cases you've got solenoids there on the liquids and you also have suction stops which is kind of interesting that you'd want to trap your refrigerant out there i don't understand that but what do i know i'm newer so i would think you'd want to bring it back that way uh, you're not having to come up with more refrigerant of course when this was built refrigerant was cheap Let's see if we can shut that one produce case off coming across here it's 14 we got our long wrench here Go. liquid's off that's gonna allow it to suck down we'll tell the rack to start sucking it and we should be able to pull her down then once we get it down low enough we should be able to valve it off we need a gauge kind of make sure we're there uh, may force some compressors on to get it there so if you look at this this is one two and that one's the third one it means we've got three temperature sensors in here which I've seen there was one up in here. I know I got one over here. And then I had a couple others over there. So, yeah. But that's what we're going to do. So let's grab our gauge. JB gauge here, which goes up to 120. Gives me a nice accurate measurement down into the one pound range, which is what I prefer. Believe it or not, I actually find this to be kind of fun. Something new to me. Newer. For a 50 pound suction. So I wanted to make sure that we only valved it off. See, if I would have flipped the, the switch on the front, it would have killed both of these, uh, the liquid and the suction both. I'm pretty sure that's how they probably got it programmed. It's how it's been in the past when I've noticed things. So what we're gonna do, since we got that stopped, um, we're gonna try to get that thing to suck down. We're gonna run this baby down. We're gonna lock some compressors on. And then what we can do, actually what we could do is we can shut some circuits down here. I don't want to turn off the one that we're actually working on and go into the compressors. So we're bringing on the compressors now. She's starting to run down. We've got some satellite compressors on here too. So we're overriding the correct spot now. Yes, yes, and on. That should run her down a little bit. So yeah, we got her down to 15-ish. Not too bad so far. There's two fails. That's not good. Stage out proof failure. So it must have must have cut out on uh, low pressure switch. So we'll kick it back on again. We'll run it down as low as we can again, and then we'll valve it off. We're only going to be able to get so low. I can still feel the vibration. There's 19. If that compressor kicks out again. That's going to be as low as we're going to be able to get. Unfortunately, they didn't put no valves out there. There's 10. That's about as good as we're going to be able to get. There we go. That's holding it at about eight. Good enough. So we can go back over here, flip on these other circuits. Because otherwise you forget, and then that's bad. There we go. We've got four fails. Go into our alarm. Going to reset. Here's the old junk that we used to have. It's old control. Granite control boards are still in there on most of it. No major issues on any of that, hopefully. So, yep. All right, so we're valved off, still 10 PSI. We'll go over there and we can start uh, checking that screen. There we go. Okay, unfortunately, looks like it's clean to me. Yeah, and it did not round it. That's brass. So, if we needed it, we had the e brake cleaner. So, unfortunately, I think we just need to melt some ice here. If we take a look here, you can see the ice is mainly way back here in the back corner in that band, and that's blocking the air from getting up to the top. It's only on that one edge, so I don't know if it was just pure airflow is an issue. You can see that we got a lot of gunk in here. All right, so we're gonna get some hot water here. We're gonna use our Subco Porta Blaster. We're gonna make the Porta Blaster work today. Diversitech. Sure would love to see yours up here. Here's some blazing hot water. We're gonna pump that up. Probably ain't really great for it, but it'll work. Okay, we'll go ahead and stick that right in there and we'll just wheel this cart out there. Easiest way to do it. 
go ahead and purge this. I can get a long run time out of this. This is a, not a very power, uh, real power hungry pump. So we'll purge this thing out. There we go. We are ready to rock and roll. Better than running an extension or a garden hose all the way across the floor. Garden hose out in the middle of this area would be dangerous. Gotta put that on low pressure. Use the ice to, to our advantage, right? Look at that. Now, it's not really made for hot water, but I've been able to do it on quite a few different devices, whether it be ice machines or whatever. I've had pretty good luck with it. You gotta make sure we get all the way back there in that back because that's where it's gonna start at in the very, very back and then it grows forward. And this is a timed off defrost, so it's not like it has any heat or anything like that. Gotta make sure that drain's working because the last thing you want is that to plug up. Try to wash some of that crap down the drain. Wire nutted together, which is kind of scary. Um, if you see that sludge right there, that right there could be what's going on. The water's probably not draining. Yeah, look at that. I bet the water's not draining past that sludge, and then it's just sitting there, causing it to build up and then freeze into place. That would make sense, because that is some nasty crud in there. Clean that and flush it out. So we went ahead and completely melted everything out of there. There was all kinds of slime and stuff up in here. Completely rinsed that out. Rinsed all this nasty crap out that was all up underneath here. This was really packed full of crap. Rinsed all down the drain, poured water down the drain, flushed all of it down. There had to have been mainly a dam going on here that was stopping the water from that, uh, draining out and it caused it to freeze in the back. And that's what it looks to be to me. Um, when you look at the temperatures of the other cases, it sure appears to me that this was the only one that was acting stupid. We're gonna go ahead and get this thing back together. Now I ran 15 or 20 gallons through this thing. And I only had three bars to begin with and I'm still at one bar, you guys keep asking. And this is only a five amp one. I usually run a six amp battery. We're gonna go ahead and open up our suction first. Here we go. Should start coming up. And then go ahead and turn our liquid on. There we go. Let's go over here and make sure that one's on. Okay. And we've been running it for a little bit. Case temperatures all came down. Now, when we were running it along here, we were running 30 degrees and all of a sudden, boom, you hit here and it was like 40 something. So it was a major jump. So the only thing left to do is check our superheat, which I don't think it's calling right now because we're running 26 degrees. We're gonna go out and kick it on a little lower and uh, see if the superheat's okay. I mean, otherwise, I mean, I'll, you know, there's really nothing else. We know we've got airflow. We know we've got refrigerant. The level's bouncing up and down, which this one here runs all over the place, zero to sometimes 14%, usually six or eight, just all over the place. But let's go out here and kick this thing back on, get that superheat double checked and see where we're at on that. I overrid it to 32 degrees. Superheat's running 22. Let's watch this for a bit and see where we come in at. It's just really makes me think that it's not feeding quite as well as it should be. Hate rushing it, but we can't like let it run forever. I mean, granted, we're talking discharge air. I may not screw with it at all. Yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's 13, 12. Yeah, we're not screwing with that thing. Seven, so we're somewhere in that six to seven range. There's eight. So now let's see what our discharge temp is here. Let's see if we're getting much out of it. Let's see, we're on 35. I wonder if now you come over to this one. That's 40. I can't win. Oops, sorry. 
So here we're at 33. Yeah, it was at 30 earlier. I mean, it runs for a little bit. Yeah, here's one that's running 30, 32. And then as soon as we, yeah, see, I definitely, you can feel difference. Well, right there, don't feel too bad different. I mean, it, maybe we're just jumping the gun. Yeah, now I'm at 30. We're at 32. Ah, I'm losing my mind. Because it works off discharge temperature, it cycles on and off and on and off. Like, there's 28 on that one. 28, and what it does, it averages these temperatures. Super heat. Well, it's back up to 20, 21-ish area. It must have shut down is what I'm assuming. Yep, now it's back to 30. And this one here is at 40-something. Well, I went ahead and yanked out this here. I was able to check the fans, make sure they were running here. And they're running down there. And the furthest one all the way down there is also running not see any ice at all they do have some of the same similar sludge in there but the thing is you could spend forever cleaning this place because they don't do maintenance and so they wait until it gets bad enough that it causes problems and then they call so uh, at this point I'm gonna call it a day I don't know what else to do with it I mean it's not perfect but it's also 30 some year old cases and you can tell half the fins down there were about rotten off so probably not transferring to the aluminum uh, which then gets air into the air path all right we're gonna go ahead and put this back to what we originally had which was 37 back to 37 all of them are really in the same vicinity 29 28 31 i mean and that 31 actually would probably be the furthest one down to the other end uh what i'm gonna assume they're not marked on there where uh which one's which but yeah checked uh, with one of the other guys that just did the pm he said uh that's about average normal uh level that he was seeing too a couple weeks ago so you know what else what else can you do i'm gonna say we're good to go got our set point with the two degree dead band defrost is off cycle and there's four of them for 45 minutes there's 14 right there so yeah you just got the uh right there um normally open normally close whatever so 14 just shut down all right well i'm gonna say we're good to go i was kind of curious on that suction uh sort or that suction valve solenoid valve um appears to me that it's always wired on all the time except for when it loses power only time you normally would need it is if you were doing hot gas defrost which you can see hot gas defrost is right here what that does is takes the hot gas line dumps it right into the suction line this valve shuts it goes through the evaporator bypasses around the txv comes back on the liquid line liquid line goes into liquid header <clears throat> and then it recirculates on the rack there is a pressure differential between the discharge and the liquid line and they have to do that so that the refrigerant can loop through the rack and back or loop through the evaporator and back to the rack so uh usually do that on one of your valves here off the right because you got your discharge you got your oil separator oil reservoir comes up here we go so you're at compressor pressure right here and that goes up to the hot gas line that they pull off of for the uh, defrost this valve here drops the pressure down comes up to this reclaim valve it can go to normal condenser heat reclaim and uh, we only have two things here heat reclaim return heat reclaim uh, condenser regular uh, heat reclaim condenser so it's not even a split well going up a little higher here's your split and that's going to shut down the half of the coil when it gets colder outside so yeah it's quite the uh the experiment there and that valve right there is called your flow con valve so yeah that's that's about it i mean this thing's just to be 502 it's converted to 507 and 
you know, everything's, everything still works. Well guys, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. Still learning on some of the rack stuff. You're always learning something every day, no matter what it is you're doing. And uh, you know, a lot of it just comes down to experience. And I've got a good uh, group of people that I can rely on. So, you know, you're never too far off from an answer. I've just basically taken you guys along for the ride and you can see what I was doing. Uh, not everybody gets to work on stuff like this. There's only so many grocery stores to go around. That's why, you know, it's always been something I enjoyed uh, wanting to get into. I uh, also want to get more into the chillers and stuff. I'm still not getting on them as much as I want, but it's coming. Thanks for watching, guys. Give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't already. We'll catch you on the next one. Later.